Um, it's been amazing to hear all these different perspectives on kind of what changing the world means. And I think so often when you think about changing the world, you think about the huge problems like uh, global poverty, uh, climate change, those sorts of issues. But it's actually really nice to be reminded in Tammy's talk about those, those personal relationships and that, that sphere of change in the world as well. You know, being able to be there for a friend who is opening up for the first time about, you know, a really deeply held problem is an amazing way to save the world. And also <clears throat> amazing to hear from Alex, like, to change the world at that sort of governmental level, which is so important, I think. You know, <clears throat> all the people in this room today, like, I think we can all, like, if not save the world, change it a little bit within those personal little spheres. And I remember getting my first really big rush of wanting to like change the world. I was sitting at a cafe on the beach at Barcelona after uh, five nights on the trot out on the town, being a real, uh, being really disgusting and having a wonderful time. And um, it was great. But I was sitting there with this crazy Scottishman. Uh, he was about 40 years old. His his life was kind of a mess. Um, you know, the morning before he'd been on the the balcony naked, screaming, good morning, Barcelona! <laughs> and even though his personal life was a mess, he, he was speaking to me about these people that were doing these amazing works in places like Brazil and Africa and, and like helping people rise out of poverty. And I was just like, oh my goodness. And then I had a look at myself and I was on first ever backpacking trip in between university and starting a job at an investment bank. I was like, what am I doing with my life? Am I, am I going to work in a bank so that I can like, save up enough money to buy a house on the North Shore and like, be comfortable and you know, buy a nice car? I was just like, I need a complete rethink. And I came back and turned my life upside down. And I got to that investment banking job on the first day and was like, I do not want to be here. This is, this is not who I am. And so I, I actually stuck at it for two years, and eventually I said to the boss, I said, look, this is not a very, and I tried to use the most careful language possible so that it didn't sound too offensive and burn any bridges. Like, I just don't feel like this workplace is socially dynamic enough for me. <laughs> so I got the hell out of there, and I traveled through Africa and um, lived in Europe for a while. And it was amazing to look at the, the problems in Africa and travel through and think about the people that had gone through and tried to change things before, like missionaries who, in my opinion, uh, got so much wrong about the way that they tried to, to help people. And I also really questioned what I could actually do as an individual and wondered whether that, that big picture global change was something that I was going to be able to tackle, to tackle at th that point in my life. And so I actually fell into a bit of a crisis because up until that point, I'd been like driving on all this passion of like, I want to... I want to help, I want to save the world, I want to be out there and I imagine myself, you know, charging through the jungle with a machete, cutting down trees to clear a village for some locals. It's like, what am I thinking about? You know, it's this totally romanticized sort of idea of saving the world. And um, <clears throat> I also got lonely traveling and I thought, I don't know if I, could, if I could really live out here away from my own community all the time and, and completely isolated and I sort of had to ask some of those hard questions of myself. And so it turned out after spending, pardon me, <clears throat> a year away that I came back and like, no, I need to build my life in my own community here in Sydney and like get to know people and build, build networks, make friendships and develop. And you know, some things that you achieve in life come through just sticking around and sticking at it. And that's, that's what I've done with my, my radio program. It's not that I was a genius at making radio. I just stayed in the job for a long time. And now I feel like journalism is like an intersection of a lot of these different things. Like I'm speaking to ministers, I'm speaking to psychologists about mental health to work through personal issues and all these different things in the hope that people will engage with it in a way they never had before. And to hear someone text in or call in for the first time to open up about suffering from depression or anxiety and opening up that conversation just inside themselves or with the people around them or in this case the entire nation is like such a beautiful thing but then also to have someone engage with politics in a way that they might not have before and you see these texts come through where they're you can tell they've never really talked out loud about politics before and you hear them do that for the first time and engage in a whole new way it's like okay 
people are, people are thinking, people are engaging with the world, and I think that's the best starting point. Thanks for listening. People will leave today with a really good toolkit of, of actions to save the world. People just taking matters into their own hands. We really do have the power. To empower people to, I guess, feel comfortable in their lives. Connect that passion and talent I have. Don't just do one thing, do a hundred things.